anthropology and memetics. He's interested in spoken and written texts, social discourses, brands, Bulgarian language, culture, and social life. Okay. Thank you. So, as, I'm a, as I am the first speaker from Bulgaria and the ultimate of this round table, I, first of all, I welcome you in Bulgaria. We are our guests. Uh, the second one. I dedicate this presentation to our famous author, Diva Raina Kabayevanska. This year she, uh, she has her 80th in Pandai. Uh, she has a master class in uh, the Bulgarian University, etc. And because Raina Kabayevanska, she will be one of the heroes in, in my presentation. That's why uh, I dedicate this presentation to her. So, I will speak from a semiotic point of view about the interference between author and cinema uh, in our entertainment life during the last three decades. A huge quantity of DVD and Blu-rays with live or non-live opera productions flows up from all e-shops or from real shops where we may buy movies and or other kind of music. Special movie theaters are created where we have the possibility to participate from New York, uh, for example, uh, to the opening of the Scala New Season, the season on December the 7th. The 7th. So, does the opera become a mass culture phenomenon? Does opera transform in Kirkens as well? Panamet Kirkens. Okay. The question is quite reasonable because opera is the most sophisticated and, and, and artificial theatrical art because it's in, it involves solid knowledge on music and on theater. Well, we have to have uh, knowledge of all the human voices, you know, uh, tenore, baritone, etc. Knowledge about the symbolics of human voices. Well, the tenore wants to marry the soprano, there is a very good joke in Bulgaria. The tenore wants to marry the soprano, but the baritone or the mezzo soprano abstracts their intentions. Or about symbolics of coloratura soprano or of a lyric tenor. Well, I mean the poor guy Don Otavio from Don Giovanni. Cinema in general is the most popular art, prototypical uh, for mass culture. Key concept for the uh, cinema is film industry, so general knowledge is sufficient. Well, I identify three stages in opera filmmaking. Here they are. Uh, so, this classification, if we may say that this is a classification, uh, is made uh, by the um, quality and the role of the soundtrack in uh, these recordings. So, the first one documentary or a reportage. Well, uh, maybe you know, uh, there is a very famous video uh, from 1964 with Maria Callas in Covent Garden, and we, and we will see later this video. Well, but, uh, uh, which is typical for this first stage, is that we have a very bad sound, black and white pictures. After that, we have a real noise. And here uh, we also have differences in soundtracks performances. Well. First of all, music score only, it's quite artificial and quite unusual. Well, I mean uh, uh, Joseph Lowe, movies on John Dugan, John Giovanni. Well, uh, there are trees, there are water, and we don't hear anything. Just the soundtrack, just the, the Mozart's music. Then, the second one, the soundtrack includes the music score plus natural sounds, like shutting the door, uh, kissing, etc., etc. And the third subdivision, the, the third subkind, is uh, the same, but also we have trailers and also we have subtitles. So I don't have enough time to speak about the subtitles, but I think that subtitles uh, make closer the opera art to the movie and to the mass culture. And uh, the third one, Documentary plus, well, uh, includes one and two, three, 
and their boundaries between live opera production and live pop concert are very flexible. So what is the problem? The problem here how to do an interface between mass culture, restricted code, well, I, uh, I use a question mark because I'm not very sure that the uh, code of mass culture is restricted, uh, and haute culture elaborated or sophisticated opera codes. So, these notions, restricted code, elaborated code, uh, I, um, I, I use these terms according to Basil Bersen terminology, you know, maybe, uh, he, uh, he claims that uh, those restricted codes are typical for lower classes in Great Britain, and the elaborated codes are very typical for middle classes and also for aristocracy. So, let's see uh, how the opera spectacle is profanated. So, first attempt of profanation, so you know very well what is this, the three tenors. So, I think that uh, this is from their first concert on the FIFA Championship. Uh, it was very fruitful, very famous, and uh, they make a lot of... Uh, Concerts. After that, well, uh, I want to observe in the first trailer how Shakespeare and Verdi and Verdi I replaced totally by the name of Franco Zifirelli. <laughs> no, 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 it's okay. Yeah. All these problems. Ah. Strats, okay. Let's take it on a very good thing. A great adventure. Gene Shell and BCGB. Spectacular star performances. Short-wrenching dramas and you The other one on the right? Yes. The blue one. Yes. Sorry. This one. There is trailer. Yes. 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 So this is the best one <laughs> from Playboy. <laughs> Diaz. In a Golan Globus production, 
Okay, but uh, the uh, second case is more uh, it's more re respectable to the score and to the opera. So this is from uh, 2010. We will see what is this. <coughs> So here we have a real opera trailer. Well, very. Well, but we have the impression that we look the lot of the rings. So, uh, please notice this. Uh, on my opinion, th uh, this is the first time that in uh, opera production, opera stage production, are used students. So, th these people are students who represent the gods. Translation, of course. Here I will remind for you uh, the three kinds of translation uh, described by Roman Jakobson. Uh, but I find a fourth kind of translation, which, which is not described by Jakobson, because uh, when Jakobson wrote. Uh, on the linguistic aspect of translation, there was no such a problem. So, inter-discourse translation or conversion by means of another discourse framework. Well, conversion, of course, is the term from the grammar, from the linguistics. Uh, here we have the definition of uh, what uh, conversion means in grammar. And we have an example, well, to help converts to a help. Well, the verb became uh, the word becomes a uh, noun. So, there are some uh, more stuff about uh, uh, conversion. Well, uh, some person says that uh, it's the changing of the grammar paradigm. Well, the verbal paradigm with the noun paradigm. A paradigm, the term paradigm from going to contemporary philosophy, 
uh, is defined like manner of thinking, manner of viewing the world. In our case, paradigm is manner of camera mo moving. So, of course, when we speak uh, about all this, uh, we have to. Uh, uh, I have to say some words about Opoyas, especially uh, the works of Roman Jakobson, first of all, and of Yuri Tinyanov. Well, in 1935, as you may see, uh, in very uh, in very short text, Roman Jakobson introduces the uh, notion of dominant. And uh, he says that dominant may be considered the focusing component of the world of art. It rules, determines, and transforms the remaining components. It is the dominant which guarantees the integrity of the structure. Uh, so, after that, well, in 19. 87, there's uh, one Japanese guy, he's a uh, professor emeritus actually in Harvard University, Professor Susumu Kuno, uh, with uh, his very best book on linguistic empathy. And that's what he says about empathy. In producing natural sentences, speakers unconsciously make the same kind of decisions that field directors make about where to place themselves with respect to the events and states, and, uh, states that their sentences are intended to describe. So, uh, if, uh, if we speak about dominant or, or linguistic or, or empathy or some kind of empathy, it doesn't uh, matter. Uh, the most important is the notions of the viewpoint because uh, uh, we speak here on viewpoint and Susumu says that after all this is question of viewpoint in those transformation, in those conversion from classic opera representation to uh, opera movie or to uh, 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 documentary plus. <coughs> so, let's see uh, about the dominant or uh, in cinema or especially in uh, opera cinema as I may uh, use uh, this expression. So, as you may observe, the empathy during these three decades is uh, concentrating on erotica. So, the opera films, the opera uh, stage productions are focused on erotica. So, we may see three uh, famous opera singers, Topi Lehitupu, if I don't make a mistake in the name, he's a very good Finnish tenor, uh, lyric tenor, well, uh, Samuel Raimi, he's Basso, and of course Jonas Kaufmann. I think that uh, this is not a real picture, but it's very representative. <laughs> <laughs> uh, about what I am speaking. Uh, so you may see, uh, well, opera singers became more and more nude on stage. Uh, but the more important, so this is some kind of joke, but the more important is the new dominant movement observed in details. Well, let's see um, one very interesting. Uh, So this is uh, so this is an, an excerpt from a very famous uh, uh, nine twenty minutes.
It's okay. No. 